Will you join me in a word of prayer? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It is good for us to be together today as we move into Holy Week. At the Kirk, our focus for these past weeks has been do not give up. Often in Lent, we give up something like caffeine or alcohol so that we can put more focus on God. But as the pandemic lingers, the message we heard from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which we have been reading these last weeks, is do not give up. Do not give up prayer. Do not give up grief. Do not give up grace. Do not give up truth. And before Chris and I decided to join together today, I was planning to preach, do not give up joy. This is Palm Sunday after all. It's a day of waving branches, shouting Hosanna, memories of children moving through our sanctuary, handing palm branches out until the whole congregation was waving their branch branches and shouting Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. They are words that feel light and playful, even celebratory. I wasn't sure that felt like the right sentiment for today, but then I reminded myself that light and playful is not actually what Hosanna means. Hosanna, what the people were shouting on the parade route as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, riding not on a steed, but low on a donkey. Hosanna actually means save us. Technically, they're yelling, save, we pray. It's a reminder of what today is and what today isn't. Jesus was not in the role of Santa Claus at the end of the Macy's Day Parade where everything has been fun and wonderful and then this is the climax of all good things. No, Jesus entered into a place of struggle and desperation. The people were living under the oppression of the Roman Empire, which meant that a small few were living in luxury and power while most were overwhelmed by systemic poverty, hunger, and debt. Israelites, the Israelites were looking and longing for their next Moses, for the one who would come and liberate them. And then there is this moment, this glimpse of hope that the one that they had been waiting for had arrived. Although Jesus didn't meet the expectations of some as he rode into town on a donkey, still the joy that day was real. Hosanna, save us, we pray. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They laid down their cloaks and they waved their palm branches. The joy of that first Palm Sunday was so palpable that we know it 2,000 years later. Though we must remember its context. Preachers will often encourage their congregations to participate in the services of Holy Week by saying that we, don't, we won't really fully know the glory of Easter morning if we don't walk through the pain of the week that precedes it. That is true, and Chris and I are some of those preachers. And so here is my quick plug for our joint Monday Thursday worship service with some of our other sister churches this Thursday on Zoom, a different link at 6.30 p.m. But this same sentiment that we offer towards Easter is also true of Palm Sunday. For us to know the joy of this day, for the crowds that welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, we must know the pain and oppression they were seeking to be liberated from. Palm Sunday is not Easter Junior. While Easter changes the story, while Easter changes the world, Palm Sunday is this moment between struggles that prepares, as we have been singing, it prepares and sustains us for what is still to come. And that is the work of joy. Joy helps us keep going. It nourishes our weary spirits. It reminds us that no matter the weight we carry, we are alive. 
We can move, but more than that, we can dance. Now, I know it seems strange, if not inappropriate, to talk about joy, much less to feel joy in the world we live in. How can we, how dare we speak of joy when our neighbors are so deep in grief after an act of devastating violence? How do we live in joy when 545,000 Americans have died of COVID? To be joyful in the midst of all of this feels callous and wrong. But it is actually one of the most natural reactions we can have. Now, that's not to say that we are at all happy that any of this devastation has taken place. We hold deep grief together for all of this, as well as the other plagues of our society from racism to poverty to division. What I mean to say is that folks laugh more easily at funerals than at any other time. I am not particularly a funny preacher, though I try. I try a little too hard, which is, I think, part of the problem. But while many of the things I try to offer in worship might fall flat, when we are gathered together in grief, laughter comes so much easier. We're desperate for it. It's like just that moment of getting our head above water and taking, taking a big breath of air knowing that we will again slip below the waves of pain. Many make the case that joy in the face of tragedy and pain does not betray the struggle, but again, sustains us for it, sustains us in it. In an article called Joy as Resistance by Ingrid Fettel Lee, she tells stories of the way joy belongs right in the middle of the brokenness we know. She says joy disrupts expectations and joy promotes resilience. She tells a story of a green initiative in New York City where trash bags, I think we have a picture, where trash bags were put out on the street, but they were not the normal black trash bags that would blend into the concrete. Instead, they were hot pink trash bags with polka dots. And so instead, so this brought people's attention. They noticed the trash to encourage people to use less trash, to throw less things away, but it wasn't a form of shaming. It was almost joy that reminded them, brought their attention to this issue and with joy guided them, led them, inspired them to rethink all the things they throw in the trash to do and to be better. In the same article, she also argues that joy gives rise to hope and lets us, when we feel joyful, we are able to reclaim our humanity. I think we need that. We need to remember that we are human, that God has created each of us. Joy enlivens us in the present and connects us beyond the moment we find ourselves in. To that point, Holocaust survivor Elie Wiesel wrote of a fellow prisoner who was trading bread, all that he had to live to survive. He was trading bread for materials to make a menorah for Hanukkah. Shocked that the man would trade something so essential to his survival, Wiesel asked him, Hanukkah in Auschwitz? And the man replied, especially in Auschwitz. As much as there is struggle behind us and before us, we, like the crowds that welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, are invited, called upon to, as poet Jack Gilbert wrote, risk delight. We are called to risk delight. He goes on in that poem saying, we must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. Folks, let us wave our branches, shout Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, dream of what Jesus could and did and will do in and through us to transform this world. 
Let us breathe in the air of this spring morning. Hold the vision of the children moving through the pews. Let us imagine, let us trust, let us rest, let us create, let us be grateful, let us rejoice. I'm gonna invite you into the chaos that is true for all Palm Sundays, but especially Zoom Palm Sunday to unmute, or if you're on Facebook, just to shout so your neighbors can hear and to repeat these words, Hosanna. 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed are the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna. Amen. Amen. Amen.